frustrating. So, I don't know if you were following the first stream, but holy crap. In that one kilometer, keep right. Meerkat totally, totally crashed on me. Like, I couldn't even open, like, I opened the app and tried to restream, and it would crash on me automatically. Like, total crashing. Uh, so, I apologize about that. That was really bad. It so happens that I'm going to meet the CEO of Meerkat, so I'm gonna, I might have to punch him. Maybe I'll kick him, I don't know. Anyway, but uh, no, but seriously, I, I was really bad. I'm really sorry about that. And I just reinstalled Meerkat. In 400 meters. Never been before, so I have to eat wings. That's the time where the heck I'm going. Uh, so I apologize for that. But that was really freaking annoying because there were like a lot of people in here and now they lost the stream. And I'm very sorry about that. It totally, like middle midstream, it's like stream has ended. That has oh, never right. happened to me before. That, that was like a whole new, that was really frustrating. And that means that what my train of thought where I was, what I was saying and whatever has to kind of start again. So I apologize, but I'll, let me just start from, from scratch here. Um, so I was saying the other day how important push notifications are and in terms of the etiquette and the way we communicate today and what's expected of you in the professional world to be able to be accessible. And, and I fully do uh, stand behind what I said the other day. I got a lot of feedback from that. People said, I don't want to be disrupted. I want to whatever, and that's fine. Your prerogative. I happen to think if I'm working with you in, in any kind of working professional relationship and I can't reach you, I find that to be unprofessional. That's just my humble opinion. And so I did stream that. I uh, talked about that the other day. And I, um, you can watch that that video to watch it if you want on the Pinterest board of all my meerkats. But um, are you going back in traffic? And I can read comments again. I hope I don't get disconnected again. That was so frustrating. Um, but anyway, the flip side of having push notifications enabled all the time is that if you're sending someone in email, um, be considerate, right? You're bothering them in the middle of whatever it is, which is fine because it's a legitimate reason. I'm assuming if you're emailing the person, there's a reason you're emailing the person. Um, so be aware of the fact that they're going to be reading your email right now and, um, you know, be considerate of that. So I woke up this morning, as I said before, with a headache. I had a headache. Then I opened my email and my headache just exploded because my email was like, and again, by the way, let me just give a full disclaimer here in the beginning. I'm not saying that I'm some kind of hot shot and I have to, you have to use, use these rules to, to engage with me by email. I mean anyone, okay? I'm just one example. But, you know, if you're sending me an email, these these are the things that I would expect, not because I'm some kind of hot shot, just because this is the way one should communicate in 2015. And I think it applies to most people. And I think even the people that send those emails that I'm going to be talking about would agree with this, that when they get emails, they don't like it. Like this. When they get emails like this, they don't like it. So we'll talk about that, what like this is in a second. But uh, anyway, my point is, I, I woke up with a headache. I opened my email. My headache was a hundred times worse. And then I opened my Facebook, you know, inbox, Facebook messages, and oh my God. And like, it's gotten to the point, and I, you know, I try very, very hard. It's very important to me. I try very, very hard to be nice to people uh, who send me silly, silly emails or messages. Like if someone sends me, and this happened, I, I kid you not, this morning, four screens, I had to scroll down, meaning four screens on my phone of a message. One Facebook message, four screens. A person I don't know, by the way, just let me point that out. Not that that matters. I'm happy to talk to and help and if I can, whatever. But four screens. On my, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's me and my ADD. But does that seem like a rational length of a message to send to someone? I mean, to me, that's, that's insane. And I, you know what else? Always, without exception, without exception, and Twitter has proved this 100%. There is no such thing that you need to say in an email or a Facebook message that needs four screens. No such thing. In fact, I, I would challenge anyone to send me an email that I could not sum up in three sentences. Very rarely is that the case. Sometimes, you know, maybe you need a little more. If there's some more meat there, most of the time it's fluff. And you could sum it up in four bullets or three bullets or even less. Um, if you could sum up thoughts in 140 characters, you could sum up your email in two, three sentences. You know what? There have been a lot of startups, a lot of companies trying to like take the Twitter model to email like uh, you know you have to, email has to be 140 or 160 or whatever amount of characters that didn't really catch on but I think email as I said before was created to increase efficiency and productivity and it's doing the exact opposite I don't know about you guys and I'm pretty sure I'm not alone I know I'm not alone in this and again I don't mean to sound like I'm humble bragging because it's not I'm not you know to get to inbox zero it, it's in and of itself is like a task that might take hours upon hours upon hours that is not normal we're, email's here to help us and it's causing more harm than help, right? It's supposed to, you know, help you get, get work done, but instead of doing work, you're spending time in your inbox trying to get it to, to some sort of order. My inbox looks like World War III. I mean, it's crazy. And then when I, as you guys know, I sign off, you know, once a week uh, for Sabbath. And when I come back Saturday night from not, from not being online for 25 hours, I mean, it's, it's real, I really, I get like full-blown anxiety attacks. Like when I see my inbox, it's insane. 
Like, I'll come back sometimes to like hundreds, sometimes thousands of emails. I kid you not. Now, again, I'm not trying, I'm gonna keep saying it because I don't want people, I know there's gonna be some, oh, you're showing off of that. I mean, people do that. I don't, I'm not, whatever. I'm just saying email is supposed to be streamlined and efficient and, and help you be productive, and it's doing the exact opposite. And it's super annoying. So, given that, that we all have so many emails, why would you send someone an email with a thousand words? Honestly, why would you do that? Right? I mean, I get these things. I, I, I'm telling you, I kid you not. Somebody wanted to send me a message on it. By the way, again, happy to get emails, happy to get messages. If I can help it anyway, feel free. I'm not, I, I mean that wholeheartedly. But keep it short. And it's, I feel bad telling people, like, did you just send me that message? Could you please sum it up? Like, I literally emailed someone back last week and saying, I literally, this is my response. I cannot read that email. Please sum it up for me in two sentences. I feel really rude and obnoxious by to say things like that. But, I mean, people, be considerate. Um, and you know, just there's a whole world out there of like, and I, you know, I, maybe I'll maybe I'll actually do it like a, a, I don't know, maybe I'll put together a whole list of email rules, of things to do and things not to do. I mean, let me give you an example, right? We talked about bulk emails many times. We talked about being human many times, and uh, of, of course, as always, it's mostly common sense to most of you. But I mean, how hard is it to just? Like yesterday I was talking, I kid you not, yesterday I was talking to Raz, the CEO of Zula, right? And we were talking about go to market, we were talking about a, an app that we're, and I said like, and I don't remember who it was, Paul Graham who wrote this, I don't remember which which one of the big VCs wrote, do things that don't scale, right? At, at an early stage of a startup, or anything really, do things that don't scale. Yes, pick up the phone and call your customers and thank them. Send emails one by one. It will take you two hours, three hours. But sending a bulk email, hey all, or hey colleague, or dear blogger, or dear journalist, or just don't do it. It's not going to get you anywhere. Be personal. Always, always be personal. It, it will not scale, right? You will not be able to send 50,000 emails one by one with the name in the in the field. But you know what? It's just it, literally sending a bulk email is just not going to get you anywhere. You're going to get such low conversion rates. It's just not worth your time. Um, any email that I get personally that says that, that I'm not I'm not in the two. I'm in the BCC or whatever. I mean, not any email, because sometimes, whatever, we'll talk about BCC in a second, because that's a whole world in of itself, but if you're not writing me an email, then I'm not, you know, then I'm not interested. If it's not addressed to me, then I'm not, again, not because of me. That's just the way email is. It's supposed to be a personal communication, you know, tool. Unfortunately, it's it's used, uh, it's abused. That's the bottom line. So keep emails short. Let me read it. Let me get to what you need, and let me respond to you. Um, but let's talk about BCC for one second. Let me tell you a story. And I have his permission. I'm not going to mention his name, but I do have his permission to tell the story. Um, so the way I used to use BCC is as follows. Someone sends me an email saying, I want a job at Google. Hazard reported ahead. Can you please intro me to someone there that you have connections with? Let's say, I don't want a job. I want to meet someone at Google. This is actually a true story. Um, can you forward on my CV and recommend me to someone there? And so I did because I liked the guy a lot and I sent an email to the, I think his title is general manager, but he's basically the CEO of Google Israel, okay, Yossi Matias, who's a friend. I sent him an email with a CV attached to the person that I was recommending, the person's CV. And I said to him, I said, this guy's amazing. If you guys are looking for someone like him, he's amazing. And I wanted the person to see that I was sending it to Yossi Matias, so I BCC'd him on it, right? So I said, basically what I'm saying is here, look, I sent it to Yossi Matias, just so you know, kind of FYI. Great, so far so good, right? Not so much. What did he do? And I don't blame him at all, by the way. Totally don't blame him. In fact, well, I guess this kind of gives away who it is, but then again, he gave me permission. In fact, I like him so much, I got him a job at, well, I, I can't say I got He got himself a job, but I helped him get a job at Meerkat. He signed two days ago. He's a great guy. He's not his fault at all. I'm not in any way angry or upset, but at the time it was traumatic. He replied all to that email. He was BCC'd on that email, meaning Yossi Matias was not supposed to know that he was even seeing that email. And what did he do? He replied all, saying, great to meet you, Yossi, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh my God. I just emailed the CEO of Google Israel, did something behind his back, basically lied to him saying, here's someone I'm recommending, and by the way, I'm showing him that I'm recommending him, right? And this guy replied all to me and Yossi. Now, again, not blaming him. Don't have anything against him. I love the guy. This is not the only time it happened. This was probably up there with the worst because this is kind of a big deal. You know, emailed the, um, the CEO of Google Israel. And that was, again, I don't think it was GM. 
Okay, BCC guys is almost, almost always unacceptable, in my humble opinion. That the uh, Roy Adler, the um, I think head of product at uh, at WeWork, I think is his title, wrote a blog post about this. If anybody wants the uh, the link, I'll send it to you afterwards. Um, I'm gonna do something very annoying right now, and I'm gonna just look to make sure that Waze is notifying me where to go because I have no clue where I'm going. All right, we're keep streaming. Okay, I hope we're back. I apologize for that. I just wanted to make sure. I don't want to be late to Ben. I'm meeting Ben, the CEO of Meerkat, at 8 o'clock, which is in 30 minutes, and don't know where I'm going. So I just wanted to make sure I'm, I'm on the right track. I apologize. Anyway, um, yeah, BCC is read-only. No, BCC should not be done ever, 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 ever. Do not BCC someone, ever. So the way I used to use BCC always is someone emails me, and, I say, and they say to me, can you introduce me to so-and-so? And then email so-and-so and say, would you mind if I introduce you to David? And I BCC David, right? So David sees that I emailed and asked for an intro. Do not do that, ever. Do not BCC. Do not bulk email BCC. The only time I think it's acceptable is if you must, must send out a bulk email, which I would say is almost never acceptable, but if you must, for whatever reason, BCC everyone. Don't to them, I don't want my email exposed. But I would say 99.9% .9 of cases, Send the email and forward it to the person. So if I'm saying, so if David asks me for an intro to Michael, I'll be Michael, I'll email Michael. Michael, do you mind if I intro to David? And then I'll forward that request, that email to David saying, look, I asked him. Do not BCC David. You, f forget the fact that he might reply all. That's, you know, this guy who did this thing with the Google, uh, with the Google um, CEO. He actually created uh, a plugin to prevent this from ever happening again. By the way, I don't even understand why that's an option, to be honest with you. I don't even understand why in Gmail I should be able to reply all if I was BCC. That shouldn't even be an option. But that's another discussion in and of itself. But um, it's it not, not only is it dangerous because the person might reply all, forget that. It is actually dishonest. Like it's actually, I would not want to do business with someone who I know is BCCs. I know that sounds crazy and maybe extreme, but I'm serious. What well, you're, you're basically lying. You're basically you're, you're you're sending someone an email and you're you're letting someone else eavesdrop on you. Like you're letting someone else sit in the room and and, and him not and, and that person doesn't know. It is literally the equivalent of having a private conversation and recording it. It is not okay. It is dishonest, and I would not want to engage with someone in business who does that. I'm telling you honestly. I I have not BC. I don't BCC anymore ever. Someone says to me BCC, I say I don't BCC. I'll forward it to you if you'd like. It is a dangerous, dangerous thing, and it is it is not. It's just not a good thing to do. It's not good email etiquette, and I don't think, I honestly don't think that it should ever be done with very, very few exceptions. Like, very few. But, okay, so we talked a little bit about email length. Let's talk about something else, guys. There's, like we said, everyone gets a thousand emails. Everyone, okay, it doesn't matter who you are, everyone gets too many emails. No one likes email today. And that's why, by the way, there's a whole space, a world out there of companies trying to disrupt email, you know, making email more visual, making email shorter, messaging apps that are like email, or just messaging apps like Slack and Zula and other things, and I'm not self-promoting, get over it. Everyone's like, oh, machine was plugged, whatever. I'm just saying, we're in that space. And email's, email's a mess, it's a huge mess. But let's talk about something else, right? So you get a lot of emails, whatever. Let's say we corresponded by email. Someone made an intro six months ago and said like, you know, oh, he's looking for a job, Hill, maybe you can help him. I'm like, all right, no problem, I'll help, you know, if I, I can try to help, whatever it is. And then the guy doesn't respond to me, or doesn't write back to me in four months. Four months later, this happened to me yesterday, four months later, someone said, the guy says to me, oh, sorry I wasn't in touch, so when can we meet? Whoa, I can look back at the email thread. You're right, I start searching my email. Give me some context, for the love of God. Like, again, not that I'm some kind of hotshot, but people get a lot of emails, and I can't, I don't think most people remember something you discussed four months ago. Like, just say, we spoke four months ago, so-and-so made the intro, uh, it's about helping me find a job and so and so. I'm, I would love to talk. So I don't, give me some context, you know. And I always feel bad. When I don't remember. I I always feel bad when I don't remember names or even in person. I'm I'm not very good with names, but um, I feel like it's again it's expected of someone in today's busy, saturated, crazy, noisy market world out there to just provide context. You know, like I get. It's funny, Jacob Nair David, who used to be the CEO of Zula, he's now at McKinsey. He always, he kind of said to me, my my, my catchphrase is context, please. Like, I, whenever someone writes me, I'm like, whoa, give me some context. What are we talking about here? What, you know? And like, someone made the intro, then remind me that the person made the intro because that's what it's about. It's about context, right? If David introed me to you, I need to know that David. Do I like David? Do I not like David? It, it's all. It all depends. The context is everything. Context is everything in general, by the way. In tech world too. That's what Apple. Uh, announced the other day with the whole uh, Siri thing. It's all contextual. Everything's contextual in this world, right? Google, now, everything's contextual. I'm talking business and technology, but um, I'm mixing them up a little bit. But my point is, 
someone doesn't remember you. I mean, you might be an amazing person, but there's a very good chance that, you know, if you spoke to someone four months ago, they do not remember you. That's kind of uh, the second thing. And the third thing, and this is a really general, just pet peeve of mine, and I guess it's not really only related to email, but it's very much related to email. And this is just, you know, really, truthfully, it isn't related to email, but people use email to do this. Don't, like, manipulate people. Like, you want something from someone, just say it straight out. Email is, again, a very short, should be a short form type of communication. There's no need to butter, I mean, I hope there's no need to butter up and be like, you know, oh, it's so amazing, blah, 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 I love what you do, blah, 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 by the way, can you help me? Just be like, Hill, I need a favor, do you mind helping? Trust me, 99% of people will, be, will appreciate that much more, I think. Um, and, uh, I don't know. 800 meters. There you go. Exit right. Good, there you go. Uh, Waze is telling me to exit right because I honestly have no idea where I'm going. Um, I just feel like, you know, I'll tell you an example, okay? Let me give you an example. So, again, if you if you follow, you know that I'm, I, I, it's a, I'm a, I have a, um, uh, a hobby of helping people find jobs. It's just for fun. You know, I enjoy doing it a lot. Definitely don't ask for anything, although the amazing, I'm not going to mention his name, someone amazing, like, really, like, emailed me this morning right. and said to me that he wants, I, he's one of the people that I helped get someone for, meaning he hired someone that I recommended. Um, he said that I, sh- I should send him the, the 98 people that I've gotten jobs for for them to all chip in and buy me an Apple Watch. I thought that was really cool. Just a cool thought. Right. I don't know what my thoughts are on that. I feel like it's going to make people, put people in an awkward position. And to be honest with you, you know, I don't need that reward for helping people get jobs. meters. Um, Turn left. But uh, it's a nice thought. I do want an Apple Watch and I definitely can't justify the expense now, so I'm not going to do it. But it was a nice thought. My point is, though, um, um, you know, I just feel like just say what you want and like, you know, people say to me, I was talking about the jobs, people say to me all the time, oh, it's so amazing that you get people jobs, blah, blah, they go on person, I have nothing against that. I hope you know that if you follow Turn me, left. I try to be nice. Uh, and I'm a big fan of being nice. I don't understand the people that don't respond when they get all popular and I feel like I'm back in high school when those people like just don't, don't talk, like really? I mean, now that you're a big, big shot VC, you're not gonna talk to people on Twitter anymore? I just, it's, it happens too often. Um, but okay, write a sentence, you know, it's so nice that you do that, that's fine. But like, I don't know, I, I just, to me it seems like, again, it's email, keep it short, and to write six, ten sentences about, you know, I've been following you, da 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 da, da. I love what you do, da da da, and I, by the way, can you get me a job? Like, just just say what you want, and you know, I, I'm telling you, I can, over the years, I can I can count on one hand as many one emails, kilometer, emails that I've gotten over the years that were so written so well, and so personalized, and so short and to the point, that like, I actually made a point an extra point in my head of like, you gotta help this person because they spent the time really customizing and personalizing this email. I'm telling you, it's all about the way you communicate. And I just feel like people do not, people know it. They know email's annoying, right? They know, everyone hates email, I think. But when you send that email, are you thinking, do you have that in mind that the person's gonna get five million other emails today and you're just gonna be one in the, in, do you know how long I spend every day trying to get to inbox zero? And because in addition to my ADD, I'm also, I think, I've never been diagnosed with ADD or OCD, but I'm, I'm fairly convinced that I'm both. And I really like to keep my email clean. Um, I can't get it to zero, zero, but I try to get it to like under 100 in my inbox. It's not easy at all. Do you know how long I spend time doing that? It's crazy. So take that into account. And again, I, I really don't want to come off like as some kind of douche who's like, oh, you know, you're so popular. That's not what I'm trying to say here. I'm trying to say there's etiquette for email. And when you're sending an email, keep in mind that that person is getting a thousand other emails. And I'm not even talking about journalists, by the way. That's a whole different ball game because they get, and VCs is the same story. They get a million emails just like yours every day. So just from a marketing perspective, you should stand out in one way or another, but that's another topic. 200 meters, exit right. That's another topic for another time. Uh, but more importantly, I'm just saying, guys, think about your audience. Think about who you're talking to. That's true, again, on Twitter. It's true about Facebook. It's true about email. I mean, don't send someone a Facebook message with a thousand words in it. It's just not what it's for. Literally, someone asked me one time, I, I, I can't make this stuff um, yesterday Exit right. about a really serious, like deep marketing question um, about how to do whatever. I'm not even gonna talk about what it is. It doesn't even matter. And they asked me on Facebook Messenger. I'm on audio only, I apologize. Like on Facebook Messenger, I'm gonna give you like an hour lecture about how to do X, Y, Z, how to go to market, whatever. It doesn't even matter what it was. That's not what it's intended for. You want to sit and brainstorm, whatever. Let's have a let's 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 meet. But don't send me a Facebook message, you know, saying to me, "Hey, Hill, how do you how do you build a startup or how do you go to market?" Like, 
That's not... Speed trap reported ahead. I don't know. I just feel like people... And I don't mean to repeat myself, um, but, I mean, really, the bottom line is, guys, there's email email etiquette, and just try to stick to it. Keep it short. Straight to the point. Be personal. Don't bulk email. And for the love of God, do not use BCC. That's really what it's about. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. I really don't think BCC is a very good tool. With very few exceptions, do not use BCC. And that's all, folks. That's really what I have to say about that. Um... I'm gonna end this stream because I gotta get to uh, Ben sometime soon. I don't really know where I'm going. So uh, have yourself a wonderful day, evening, night, wherever you may be in the world. Uh, keep it real in, in email, that's what I'm saying. And uh, we'll talk soon. I apologize about the meerkat problems earlier today. Take care for now.